What's up guys, CP Modder here back with another video and today we're here with this month's PC build plan which is a series of videos where we go ahead and part out some PC builds that are either just generally great starting points or a decent build to go ahead and build and today we are targeting the ultra low budget office type PC build as some people out there don't exactly need video cards and high end systems they just need something that gets them online and is usable with a little bit of upgradability if they do want to get into maybe some gaming or various other other tasks down the line and this system great base starting platform so kicking things off with a great base we do start off with a pretty decent price tag and for that we do get ourselves the AMD Athlon 200 GE this guy runs at 3.2 gigahertz it's a dual core chip and is based on the Zen architecture but most importantly for us right here it has built-in graphics from the Vega graphics family and whilst we're not exactly going to be going ahead and running video games and high-end stuff it is able to drive 1080p and even 4k displays no problem and if we did really want we could throw in a dedicated GPU with the decent enough cores that we do have on board again that said we're really not going to be pushing the limits with the CPU and we're not going to be destroying any uh, benchmarks anytime soon but all in all, enough to get us online, enough for some decent office work and really isn't a bad chip for the price that you do pay. Now motherboard wise, we did want something with enough connectivity to get us by and that we did get ourselves the ASRock uh, B450M-HDV. Uh, this guy goes ahead and supports the micro ATX form factor but most importantly has all the IO that we are really looking for in a B450 chipset motherboard. We also too have the benefits of B450 so we don't need to do BIOS updates if we did want to drop in a Ryzen R series CPU. We've got things like dual RAM slots which would have been nice to have four but hey is definitely enough for here today with up to 16 gigabytes of RAM support right here and 32 if we get the newer high density modules and let's face it for office tasks if we're really pushing much more than 16 gigs we're probably doing a little bit more than what we would consider doing office tasks although Chrome does eat up a fair bit of RAM. That being said though, all in all is a great motherboard and a great starting point, especially with our flexibility. This guy's got plenty of SATA ports, plenty of Pixar Express expansion if we wanted to add a video card, add a network card, whatever we did want to add, boom it is right there. And also to just really everything we need in a good solid budget board. Now RAM wise, we did go ahead and grab ourselves some RAM here. Would have been nice for 16 gigs, but let's face it, it is still office work and you can easily get by with eight gigs of RAM. So so we did go with 8 gigs of Corsair 2133 megahertz. Now, yes, Zen cores do like faster speeds, but again, remember, we're not pushing the limits of this thing. The actual amount of time this would be maxed out at 100% really being utilized is maybe a few times a year, if even that. So uh, running faster RAM was really, really nice, and if you can afford it, it would be a great upgrade, but Honestly, the CPU is not going to take advantage of it. Heck, the CPU doesn't even support that fast memory at that. So it's really not exactly the world's most important thing. For us, capacity is a little bit more important right here. And sure, would have been nice for 16 gigs, especially if you wanted to load up some games. But hey, we could easily drop in a second stick, get your channel support for better performance right there. We could get faster RAM and obviously get more storage. But all in all, 8 gigs great place to start. Now storage wise as I've been talking about recently 2019 is a great place for storage and right here we are looking at ourselves a pretty good option right here with a crucial BX500 480 gigabyte drive which makes up our main storage drive. And yes 480 gigabytes might not be the world's biggest storage but again just simple office tasks Word doesn't take up a lot of space chucking your documents here and having a good backup solution like say Backblaze is going to get us by absolutely no problems and for most people 480 gigs, more than enough for what they're doing. If you're into photography or if this build is for someone who likes to take photos on the weekends or store a little bit more files, then throwing in something like a WD Blue 2 terabyte or even a 4 terabyte drive would be an amazing upgrade right here. Plenty of storage with decent enough performance to get the job done. Now at this point we would usually talk about a video card for the system, but we don't have one because we really don't need one. However, when it comes to a video card in a build like this, something like a GTX 1050 Ti is a great option or over on the AMD side, there's some great options too. 
but we really don't need one for this particular use case. Again, general office tasks like browsing the web, typing word documents, paying bills online and that type of stuff doesn't really need much more than integrated graphics. As much as some people might find it hard to believe, yeah, you can easily get away without a dedicated graphics card right here. So we'll then move on just to the case itself where we went ahead and grabbed ourselves uh, the Deep Cool Wave V2. It's a clean and simple uh, case. It doesn't have a side window, thankfully, as these parts don't exactly look so great. Sure, the motherboard is a nice and stealth looking motherboard, but all in all, we don't really have anything inside of this guy to actually look at. So having a case without a side panel saves us some cash right here. And overall, I think it looks like a not too bad case. Nice to tuck underneath a desk or have up on the desk because you really shouldn't put your PC on the floor. But point being, doesn't stand out like a sore thumb and really isn't that bad there. Rounding out the build itself, we have ourselves the power supply, which is the Corsair CXM 450 watt, which is a solid power supply. And it's actually probably the only thing on this entire list that we did go a little bit higher than you probably could get away with and that is simply because of headroom to, for upgrades in the future and also to, to carry that power supply over to other systems and I guess sort of a little bit of a third point is you should always overbuy your power supply so it doesn't explode because I've seen it time and time again where people buy nice systems, buy cheap power supply, save themselves a few dollars there, power supply explodes, takes out the rest of the system, now their entire build is broken because they saved like 20 bucks on their power supply. So never cheap out on your power supply. We didn't do that right here. Spent a little bit more than what I would have liked, but overall got ourselves good power supply that we could take towards our next system. Or we could go ahead and upgrade the system down the line if we need more hard drives, if we want a GPU, if we want a higher end CPU, literally whatever we want to do should be covered more than enough with this guy right here. Grab ourselves a cheap key from GVG more for Windows 10 or whatever version of operating system you want to run and boom a simple budget office system for just over 400 Australian dollars or for my US viewers like 230 US dollars which is a really great price tag to get into a system without blowing the bank and hey if you really wanted to push it throw in a cheap little video card and boom you've got yourself a gaming rig yeah you're not going to be pushing the highest end graphics but hey you can easily get away on some more indie and basic titles if I had to add anything to this list maybe you've got $500 budget or around 300 US dollars, I would definitely recommend grabbing yourself like a two terabyte WD blue drive. They don't cost you an arm and a leg, but are a really nice upgrade over the storage we do have right here. The 480 gig drive, perfectly fine, but having a little bit more storage is really nice and a good backup solution, especially for an office computer is extremely important. So something like Backblaze would be a great option. But let me know what you would change for a budget office system down in that comment sections in the description box though. I'll leave the link to the PC part picker link and also to the parts themselves linked all down below. Guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you all in the next one.